Hey everybody, Jack Clispini here with a new tutorial. In our last video, you saw me convert this Centurion to make him look a little bit cooler than out of the box. You know, it gives him a bit more dynamism, more character. And today we're gonna paint him in a new recipe for the Imperial Fists. We're gonna start off with some red brown primer from Steinal Res. This is a great primer for a ton of different workups, but I particularly like it for building up a nice warm Imperial Fists yellow because we can work off of this with some oranges and some yellows. We can get a very saturated, very vibrant yellow with a lot of high contrast in it that makes the Imperial Fists look way cooler than just basic flat yellow. First color we're going to use in this workup is some Pro Acryl Burnt Orange. This is a nice darker rusty orange. We're going to mix that up in the airbrush with this new airbrush medium from Army Painter. This is a uh, pre-release mix. I'm kind of beta testing this stuff right now, seeing how it works. And so far, I, I like it. It's a good product. It's a little bit different than what I'm used to with the normal Vallejo flow improver that I use. Uh, this stuff is quite a bit more on the airbrush thinner side than it is on the flow improver side, but it's a great product and I really enjoyed using it on this model. You know, airbrush is like a dream, so I think it's definitely worth picking up if uh, you're not a fan of just straight flow improver. If you like a little thinner in your mix, this works great. Dries faster uh, than the Vallejo flow improver which can help when you're having to airbrush a whole bunch of guys in a row for like an army or something. After that, I'm gonna take Agent Orange and Golden Yellow. I'm gonna mix those two together 50-50. I think I use two drops of each uh, during this taping. Again, I'm using that Army Painter uh, Airbrush Thinner Flow Improver Mix and I'm just going over the model, making sure to leave a little bit of that orange showing through in the deeper recesses and on the shadowed parts of our big flat surfaces on our armor, like his shoulder pads and on his arms and legs so that we have a nice gradient built up. I'm not focusing any one area too particularly in this, uh, in this step right here. You can see it's more of a wider spray, but I am making sure not to blast out the deeper red, brown, oranges that we've airbrushed previously. Our next color is going to be a mix of golden yellow and bright ivory. It's a two to one, so I use two drops of yellow, one drop of ivory. And now we're going to focus some areas. You can see this is like electric yellow bright. And that is by intent because we will be using a staining brown and black oil wash on this model. I want to take those yellows up to a much brighter place than we would typically want an Imperial Fist to look because we're going to blend it back down with those browns and blacks from our oil wash. So it's okay to take that color up to 11 or 12 because we're going to be washing it back down to that perfect 10 in regards to building our gradient from dark to bright. And you can see that like most normal Space Marines, even on this Centurion, I am focusing the center lines of his torso, of his armor plates, of his arms and legs, kind of doing radial highlights on big rounded areas like his shoulder pads and his helmet to really pop out that yellow. All right, now we're gonna block in our other colors. I have silver and dark silver from Pro Curl, and I'm gonna mix these two together 50-50 to get a nice, even gunmetal color. And anything that you want steel colored on your model, go ahead and paint it in with this color. 
So I'm doing basically the heavy bolters, hurricane bolters, some of the pistons and metal joint workings on the Centurion model, but you can do as little or as much of this as you want. There's definitely some things that I could have painted with this silver color, but chose not to just because it looks fine without it and it would have been a waste of time. Here he is with all of those areas painted and you can see we have a pretty good mix of yellow to steel color in regards to his uh, mechanical workings. And then I'm going to take the silver by itself and I'm going to block in all of the uh, accessories on his armor, all these little embellishments like the shoulder icon and some of the other little things around his armor because gold does not really show up all that great on a field of yellow. So whenever I paint Imperial Fist, I kind of swap out metallics like bronze and copper and silver for things that would normally be gold on, say, like my Ultramarines collection. Next, I'm going to pull out some olive flesh, and I'm going to use this color to do the very large eagle on his chest and all of the uh, parchments for his purity seals. And he's got like this little skull and a, like a little windy scroll thing on one shin. I'm going to paint that in. Just a nice kind of darker ivory color with this olive flesh. So that way, again, we have a nice color that will stand out on this field of oranges and yellows. So whereas the gold would kind of muddle itself into those yellows from across the table, a nice pure ivory color for those will stand out. After that, our last metallic is gonna be bronze. This is a really, really nice reddish brown metallic from Pro Acryl. And I'm going to be doing like the little skulls on his heavy bolter. And he's got one little like eagle up on his shoulder pad trim, which I'm doing in bronze because the trim will be black. So it'll stand out nicely. Went ahead and did like the casings inside of his ammo hoppers, things like that. It doesn't have to be, you know, one to one real world brass color. We can use this bronze and it looks just fine. Kind of suits the more grim, dark nature of 40K. After that, we're gonna do our trim color. I'm using coal black here because I personally really like the Imperial Fist's fifth company. You can substitute this for whichever company your collection may be. Uh, with the exception of second company being a yellow trim, you can either uh, leave it yellow and kind of airbrush that into your workup when you're doing the model. So it's, you know, just one continuous color like a lot of other chapters do, like the Dark Angels, they have green trim on green armor. Or alternatively, you can work with a, say, like a bronze metallic that'll stand out nicely and do your second company that way. After that, I'm gonna get some purple from Pro Acryl and do our purity seals in some purple wax. I could do red, you could also do colors like green and blue, those look really nice with the Imperial Fist, but going with purple. I think back in the day they used to do a lot of Imperial Fist purity seals with purple wax. And also the Lamenters, I think, are known for having kind of a pinkish purple on their purity seal wax. I just think it looks nice.
With all of our base colors blocked in, I'm gonna move over to the oil wash step. I've got the Mr. Hobby weathering color system, stained brown and multi-black. And I'll be using these two oil washes in conjunction with the oil-based solvent on the model to get a really, really nice blended oil wash effect. First things first, I'm going to put the solvent pretty much over the entire model, just paint a layer of that fairly heavily over the entire model. It's going to lube up the model so that when I put our very densely pigmented oil wash on there, it'll help it dilute and kind of fall into all of the recesses without sitting and pooling on any flat surfaces. That being said, this is a very aggressive oil wash. So you will have to go back and clean it up wick away excess and blend it out you can see i'm just loading up the model with our stain brown and now i'm going to continually dip my brush into the solvent my bottle is already kind of polluted so if you decide to get into this system for yourself make sure to have like a little cup or dish or something you can pour your solvent into so you're not dipping your brush directly into the bottle i'll have to uh, start doing that when i get a refill later on but basically i'm just bringing that solvent in loading it up in my brush, putting that on the model. It dilutes the oil wash and cleans it up. It kind of dilutes it into a very, very, very thin liquid state and mixes it all over the model. And it also will clean it up. So if you see that your oil wash is kind of starting to set because this oil wash does dry relatively quickly, you can get some solvent on there and clean it up off of the model and blend it back out into the recesses. I have a paper towel off to the side. I'm just continually cleaning it up, touching my brush to the paper towel to wick away all of that liquid out of the brush and then going back and cleaning and blending a little bit more. Rinse and repeat until you get a nice, clean, blended oil wash look. After that is set to a point where I'm happy going in with our other oil wash, I'm going to grab the multi-black. I'm going to put that all over the metallic areas, even going back on these little accessories on his armor, little decoration pieces. If I get a little bit of black stain on our yellow armor, I don't care. I am going to be repeating the same steps where I come back with the solvent and clean and blend that out so there's no black stains on our yellow armor surfaces. Also hitting the chest eagle just because I wanted the details to be a little bit darker than with the stained brown. I'm going to clean that up again. Just wanted those uh, details in the eagle, like the feathers and all that, to have a really nice hard black line into all those details so you can see it across the table. Here I'm using brushes to do this whole process, which works fine for me. You can be a little bit more efficient by using some model type Q-tips. I believe Tamaya, uh, Mr. Hobby, and a couple of other companies sell these types of cotton Q-tips. They're packed much more dense than your basic uh, you know, ear cleaning Q-tips that you buy at the grocery store. I have some of those, but whenever I use them on a model, they just kind of fall apart and get stringies of cotton all over the model. So I recommend if you want a more efficient way of doing this, get some of those model Q-tips from Tamaya or Mr. Hobby and uh, you won't have any trouble. Although I do like some of the aspects of using a brush because you can kind of use it like a blending tool and an eraser tool. So, you know, mix and match, do what, do what works best for you. After that's set up, I'm going to come back and pick out some details on our ivory eagle and his scroll work and parchment with the exact same olive flesh paint. The intent with this paint job is to have a bunch of these guys ready to go relatively quickly. A lot of people are going to want to add to their existing Imperial Fist collection or start a new Imperial Fist collection. So I'm not going to be picking out every single little detail on the model with these highlights. You can go as hard as you want. So if you want to go in and do these steps and get all of those teeny tiny little details picked out, you can. I'm going for a more sketched in highlighting for this because 
in my head, I'm like, how would I paint this if I had to do, you know, 12 Centurions, 35 Intercessors, a couple of tanks, a bunch of HQs, stuff like that. I'm going to take the same purple and highlight up the wax seals just like super fast. Catch those ridges on the wax seals and just pick them out a little bit. After that, I'm going to get some dark warm gray. This is going to be our edge highlight color for our black trim. Basically, unless I can use the side of my brush on a hard edge to get a nice, clean, easy edge highlight, I'm not going to edge highlight it, right? I'm going to pick out the biggest, boldest areas where light would reflect on the hard edges of his armor, and that's what I'm going to edge highlight. I'm not going to edge highlight every single little line and little edge and little detail. As a rule of thumb, when I paint models, the bigger the model, the less edge highlighting you need. After that, we're going to edge highlight the yellow armor. This is the same yellow and ivory mix that I used during the airbrush step. I just poured a little bit out onto my palette, and that is what I'm using to edge highlight. Again, if I can't use the side of my brush to get a crisp, clean edge highlight, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to sit there and scribe lines. I think there was like two places on this model while I was doing filming where I did have to scribe a line by hand just because I couldn't quite reach it with my brush and it was in an area that I really felt I wanted an edge highlight but the general rule is if I have to do you know 12 of these guys I'm not going to sit there and edge highlight every single little thing and I'm not going to worry about trying to hand paint little scribing lines on edges that people aren't going to see across the table or don't matter in the grand scheme of things. Before I'm done with that though, I'm gonna take that paint and I'm gonna thin it out even more so it's almost transparent. And I'm gonna come in and do some little paint scratches on different parts of the armor plates. Just two little dashed lines here and there. It creates that sort of comic booky uh, shine lines or paint scratches, however you really wanna look at it. But I just like the way it looks on Space Marines. So whenever I paint my own, that's the way that I do. Next, I'm going to pull out some Vallejo Fluorescent Red. This is the Model Air version. Works great. All I'm going to do is take that Fluorescent Red and drop it right into the recess of his eye lenses. And when it dries, it's more concentrated around the outside and thin over the lens, which creates an instant glow effect. Super, super easy. It creates a really striking, aggressive look for your Space Marine lenses that people can see all the way across the table. And I've been doing it this way for a really long time. It's my favorite way to do lenses. And again, super fast. Last step is I'm taking some black primer in the airbrush and I'm going to very lightly feather that onto the areas where I want some black carbon buildup. So barrels of the bolters where all those shells are coming out and all of the carbon gases are staining the metal with that black carbon buildup, the ejection ports, the big smokestacks on his power pack there where all the exhaust is coming out. I don't imagine the Space Marines use a lot of clean energy, so <laughs> I like to build a carbon buildup on all their power packs and exhausts and things of that nature. And that's pretty much it, just a little bit of weathering little bit of paint scratches during our edge highlight phase and he's pretty much ready to go. Slap some you know texture paint on the base and ready for the table or you can use resin bases or whatever floats your boat and these guys are ready to go. Hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I had a ton of fun painting this Imperial Fist guy. With that I'll catch you next time.